Hello again. This is the Pincrest High School AP Physics 1 video series. This is video 3C, writing force equations. What we want to do here uh, is use a free body diagram in conjunction with Newton's laws uh, to write force equations. Uh, when we apply the appropriate uh, Newton's law to the situation based on the problem statement and the behavior of the object, uh, it will generate a set of equations that we can then use to solve for a missing variable or missing quantity. Um, <clears throat> so what we have, what follows here will be the steps that we'll take to write force equations <clears throat> using a free body diagram. So step one, we've uh, already looked at creating free body diagrams. Um, step two, uh, if any forces act at an angle other than horizontal or vertical, we're going to need to resolve the components of those forces and draw a revised free body diagram. Uh, we need the forces to line up with the x and y directions because we're going to separate them when we write the force equation. Uh, step three, we're going to establish uh, the positive direction for both x and y. Now we're used to using standard sign conventions. Uh, we will continue to do so if the object is at rest. So um, if the object is not moving, we fall back on standard sign conventions. Right is positive, left is negative, up is positive, down is negative. Uh, if the object is moving, we're going to then establish the direction of motion as positive. So uh, this will be uh, going against our standard sign conventions in the event that the object happens to be moving to the left or down. But once we establish that, that won't be a big deal. Uh, step four, we then have to decide uh, independently in the x and y direction if the object is accelerating. So if the object is accelerating in the x direction, then in the x direction we use Newton's second law. So sigma fx equals max. Sigma fx means the sum of the forces in the x direction. So we're only going to be looking at the horizontal forces. <coughs> uh, if the object is not accelerating in the x direction, then we would use Newton's first law, and the sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero. We then make the same determination in the y direction. Uh, is the object accelerating up and down? If yes, we use sigma f in the y direction equals ma in the y direction. If it's not accelerating, we use Newton's first law. Now step five, um, we consider our revised free body diagram with x and y components if necessary. Any x direction forces that point in the positive direction are positive. Any that point in the other direction are negative. We write them this way right off the free body diagram to make up the left side of the force equation. In other words, the sigma f part. And then the right side is determined by which of the Newton's laws applies in step four. So we either apply MA on the right side or zero, depending on if the object is accelerating or not. Then we do the same thing for the Y direction, of course, independently. So you conceivably could use a different Newton's law for each direction if the object is accelerating, for example, in the X direction and not accelerating in the Y, as we'll see. So here was our first example of uh, writing a free body, drawing a free body diagram. Uh, we have a situation, the crate of mass m is it initially at rest, it's subject to a horizontal force, Fa, accelerates it across the floor. So we drew the free body diagram already, it looks like this. <coughs> We're going to establish uh, the positive x direction to the right because that's the way the crate is moving. Uh, it's not moving vertically. 
so we're going to fall back on standard sign conventions up is positive down is negative all right again this crate is accelerating horizontally but not vertically so when we look at the free body diagram in the x direction we have fa and ff fa is in the positive x direction so it's positive ff is in the negative x direction so it's negative there is my sigma f in the x direction so fa minus ff and then on the right side because the object is accelerating in the x direction we use max in the y direction fn is positive f sub g is negative so we have fn minus fg and then equals zero because the object is not accelerating vertically so these are my two force equations right we would then look at whatever data we're provided with um, and use these force equations to solve for something that we didn't have <clears throat> Now let's look at uh, a more complicated example. Um, again, we drew the free body diagram for this situation, the crate with a force at an elevation angle theta. The box accelerates to the right, does not leave the ground, so it doesn't come up off the surface. So when we look at the free body diagram, again, what do we have to do with FA? And the answer is we need to resolve it into components because it doesn't line up with the X and Y direction. So what we're going to do is FA pulls to the right and up. <clears throat> so we know it has an X component and a Y component. The X component pulls to the right. The Y component pulls up. We're going to use the components. We're going to express the components using the magnitude FA and then the sine and cosine of angle theta. So again, we've done vector components already, so we know that. <clears throat> so now when we look at the x direction again we'll establish the right is positive and up is positive in the x direction we have fa cosine theta is in the positive x direction ff again is in the negative x direction equals ma because the crate accelerates to the right in the y direction again it doesn't move vertically we have two forces in the positive y direction fn and FA sine theta, those are both positive. And then minus FG equals zero. So again, it doesn't accelerate vertically. So the three forces in the Y direction have to cancel out. We have a couple other examples. Again, we'll take a look at these um, potentially in class. Okay, we've already done the free body diagram for this one and for this one. Uh, note that this is held at rest, which means the box doesn't accelerate at all. So both force equations will equal zero. Uh, you'll see both of these uh, in your weekly web assignment. So that'll do it for how to write force equations. Next up is quantifying friction. Until then, see you again next time.